Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to be talking about my Steel Lion project. So it's been a while and communication with the client went slightly dead, but they got back to me and they were interested in me completing the project. As I've said in the past, I was fairly reluctant to put too much effort in because it was a very low paid project and more a fun experience than a really serious project. And it was a chance for me to test out tools and a nice opportunity to talk about animations and workflow and working with clients for this YouTube channel. So at the end of this video, I'll be giving some advice about how you can make sure you get paid by your clients for the work that you do. So you can see what we've got so far on the screen. It's not looking awful, but it's not looking great either. And I'll break it down a touch. So we've obviously got the slow walking in, in this sort of grassy area. And this is taken from the storyboard that I received. So there is a bit of confusion as to where this lion exactly is, whether he's in the forest or in a pine forest or wherever. And this, I don't like this bit, to be honest. This was one of the first scenes I did. And he looks like he's jumping like a bunny rabbit. But uh, I'm learning a lot as I go along. And it's not awful. It, it, it works, but it's not amazing. This bit I'm not that pleased with. In fact, I don't like the footage for this. Um, as you can see, this sort of drone footage. Again, that's what I was given. Uh, and we're using sort of non-copyright footage, which is free. So it's a really low cost <laughs> project. Uh, this is this was the fun scene. And I'll break this down a bit more. I'll break this one down first and I'll go through a tiny bit of what I did here. I used a grass add-on and it was called something like Blender Cycles Low Poly Grass Models Add-on. So uh, someone called Wolf uh, has made this add-on. I used it to start with and then kind of modified it and added my own bits and pieces. Uh, but it was a good base and it was nice and quick. I think that's the main thing because uh, this project has dragged on a fair bit and I wanted to move on quickly. And it doesn't look too bad in this case. Uh, these foreground elements, I think I got off places like blend swap and adapted them and uh, modified them to fit the scene. So it kind of works, this sort of walking through the long grass. The movement's not too bad. It's a bit jolty, it's tricky to see on the video, but uh, still working on my animation really. Uh, not that pleased with this scene compared to the last one. Um, same sort of thing, probably needs a bit more grass around here. I put a, a big sort of blurry foreground element in here, which helps to hide the mistakes. Uh, the render isn't so good. You can see all these sort of minor glitches in the details. And this is, use, this is all using Eevee, uh, which is uh, problematic at times, but it makes your render go much so much faster the the biggest problem i have is that this would take um uh, probably uh, three hours to render with cycles and i can't really allow my computer uh to be used for three hours while i can't use it for other things uh, so if i had the time to do it overnight i probably would and maybe i'll do them all or maybe even send them off to a render farm somewhere and uh, i'm using the depth of field a lot to blur all my mistakes foreground and background but that seemed to in Eevee uh, it really increased the render times just doing a depth of field uh, with your camera so depth of field is the bit that's in focus so the I've got a target on the camera and uh, the rest should be out of focus but it was quite tough and it didn't work that well and how I would expect a real camera to work so uh, there's obviously issues that tidy up there uh, in Eevee I think uh, but that was all right. This bit's not too bad. It sort of makes sense. Looks a bit stiff, but he is made of steel, of course, so that's all right. <laughs> this bit, I'm not pleased with this. One of the first bits I did, and like I say, the movement just doesn't work. It looks like he's uh, moving through like a bunny rabbit. And ideally, I'd tidy these things up and go back, but it has actually been okayed by the client, so I'm probably just going to leave it because I probably need to move on, really. It's sometimes tricky like that with projects. I could spend a lot more time with this, but uh, is it improving me or do I need to move on to a different project and get more enthusiasm for something else and that sort of thing. So uh, especially as it has been passed by the client in a sense that they're happy with it. Um, yeah, so this this is not nice, this piece of footage. Uh, the line looks too in focus and the background looks out of focus. Um, I tried fixing that, in fact, so this is after a fix. It looks like his he legs are going too high in the air as well. And he looks like he's floating. But it, it does work, and you can see what's going on. The transition between some of the scenes doesn't work as well, because uh, one moment he's just started running, and then he's in full swing there. And then he's suddenly in the middle of jumping through the scene, and then he's outside of the woods, 
So there's a there's a discontinuity in the scenes, which uh, is a kind of a fault of the storyboard in a sense, but maybe it's a fault of mine as well that I should have more sort of establishing shots uh, within the scenes. But uh, I only have 25 seconds. Uh, this this scene was good fun, and I'll break this down further in um, Photoshop and After Effects um, for you if you're still interested. Uh, so in Photoshop, uh, this is the scene and it's made up of uh, lots and lots of layers. So overlays, the foreground cliff, uh, and then we've got, uh, I don't even know what that is. Is that doing, oh, the sign. <laughs> no, that's the sign highlights. You should see slight highlights, but I'm not seeing much when I press it. And then the sign in the background. Uh, the client actually made the sign, so I just stuck that in and edited it slightly. And then what have we got? What else have we got? Uh, lots of adjustment layers and all sorts, and all sorts of frame. Uh, it's, oh, the shadow of the sign. So that all makes the sign. I should put those into a group, really. Sunburst. Oh, a bit of a sunburst <laughs> coming over the mountains. Uh, fog to try and hide my mistakes. It just about works with the fog. It's not great. I'm not the best at this compositing artwork. I, I'm still learning it. It's great fun uh, to try and make scenes from photo bashing or whatever it might be called. Uh, it, it's really exciting stuff, but I need a lot more practice and more time would help, really. So there's the fog layer. There's a small collection of city buildings there, down here. No, uh, oh, what's that one? That was a big layer. Oh, that's more fog. Oh, and a tiny bit of city in the same layer, so I've obviously done that by accident. Uh, so there's that. More city buildings. So you can see how I've built this city up uh, from the ground up. And yeah, so that's the original... Is that the original plate? Yes, it is, and there's the sky in the background. That's quite a nice shot, really, that is. All these pictures trying to look through Creative Commons images so I can use them, uh, so there won't be any licensing issues and so forth. Uh, so uh, a lot of <laughs> a lot of building up and layering. And so I've en ended up with this piece here, and I've got two main layers, the background layer uh, and the foreground layer. So I can now take this into After Effects and move them at different speeds. I'll show you that in After Effects. So let's go across to After Effects. So there, where is the foreground layer? Well, that's the background layer, and the foreground layer must be, there's the lens flare, an overlay, camera. Uh, oh, the pre-comp is, the, of course, the lines in the pre-comp. So the line and the foreground layer. And when it moves in, you can see the camera sort of moves in and the foreground layer becomes bigger, uh, which you can see in the shot a bit easier. I'll overlay the shot now, actually, so you can see that a bit better. So you should see the line and the foreground layer sort of becoming bigger, so it gives the illusion of depth. And there's all sorts going on as well with the lens flare, which you can just see there, lens flare going across. Try and keep the effects subtle, but the worse it is, uh, or the worse your compositing is, uh, the more you have to add in lens flares to hide things. What's the overlay one? Can't even see that one, so that wasn't doing much. Uh, there is an adjustment layer there as well. Oh yeah, that's quite a heavy adjustment layer, isn't it? To give the sort of illusion of evening time and a oh, fog layer as well, so a bit of fog in there, and that actually does move across. It's difficult to see, very subtle, subtle changes, uh, but you can see the effects that it has. So in terms of the overall project, I'm almost there. I've got two more scenes to do. The lion has got to jump off the cliff, and then it's got to be a close-up of him, and the logo. I'm fairly happy with how it's gone. There's been some interesting communications with payment. The client has been paying me. It's a very small amount, and like I say, it's not really for the payment that I'm doing this project. But I do want to talk about payment in a bit, because... I do hear of lots of people who kind of get scammed doing work for free or ending up doing work for free because the payment was never there and all this sort of thing. So what I'm doing with this project, I keep sending across drafts that are very small that they can't really use, but they can see that I'm doing the work and then they can pay me for that work. And eventually to protect myself, once I've received all the payment, then I will give them the full, full scale render. And that is the best way to work. Don't send anything off that's complete. Uh, do it in draft forms. Even if they complain about it and say, I want to see the full product, send them a still of the full product if it's a 3D model. But be very, very careful sending them the full product before you've had any payment. It does depend on the client. You might be used to the client and comfortable with the client, and that's fair enough, and that's fine. Uh, that's up to you. But uh, this, for me, is a new client. You may actually feel nervous about saying these things, but it's very normal for an artist only to give out the full product once they've received payment. 
So do feel confident that that's okay to say that. And if they have problems with that, then it may be one of those contracts that you need to steer clear of. Okay, so I hope that all helps. I hope you're still enjoying the series. Let me know of your thoughts or any feedback in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.